What's up team? In this video, we're going to do a watch list entry breakdown. So this is what my normal watch list will look like on any given day. I give you trigger levels to take the stock long over. I give you trigger levels to take the stock short below. When you have these trigger levels come out, the first thing that you should do is place a, a trend line right at the trigger level. So for Boeing, I'm on the five minute chart time frame. That trigger level was 173 long over 173 here's your line and you just play off of the trigger level so the first thing that we should notice about this chart is that the first five minute candle closed well over the trigger level 173 it closed at 174 two things here number one we don't trade in the first five minutes so cancel that candle out number two we never chase a move up and over the trigger level if you're wanting to go long on a stock you should try to enter on a, on a dip, on a red candle. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but when you're day trading options, your premium is going to be spiked at this price. If you buy here, you're immediately red here. You likely get stopped out of the trade, and then you watch it go up and against your position. So um, 173 was the trigger level. We waited for it to break over 173, waited for it to pull back to 173, and this is where we took our entry. This is noted here. Um, I said it's over the trigger level, right? 634, four minutes into the session open. These are the contracts I'm eyeing. This is the current price, 4.0. Wait for the pullback to validate as a support. Right here, 637, three minutes later. Took Boeing long off the dip. Those same contracts, I got a lower entry price. See that? $25 lower. Not 4.0, I entered at 375. My stop was just below the uh, trigger at 172.30, um, never even came back down, and it went sh pretty much right in our way. So as soon as we entered, um, we were almost immediately green on the trade. And that's, that's psychologically so important as a trader. To enter a trade and immediately be green, you're not feeling like you should cut the position. You're not feeling like this could be a losing trade. You have more patience with the trade. You think the trade is going to work out for you. Um, if anything, at this point, you have a cushion for profit. So if you're up only you know, 10% at this price point, what you can do is then move your stop from that 172.30 level that I mentioned uh, right here. You can move your stop up to 173 to the entry price. So if anything, this is a risk-free trade at that point. You know, if it comes all the way back down to here and you get stopped out for break-even, oh well, right? You didn't lose any money. You paid a little bit of commissions, um, but maybe you had your stop too tight. It just, it's so psychologically important to be green on the trade when you enter rather than being red. So try to enter on a dip. Um, this pulled back perfectly to the trigger level 173. I jumped to the one minute chart time frame and I'll show you why I called that out. Okay, so this was at 637. Um, right here, I saw it pull back, it dropped down, that candle got bought up. This candle right here, this is known as a hammer candle. This is a reversal candlestick. It tells us that the price point dropped below the, the trigger but buyers were here to step up and buy that up. Now, when you see this candle form, it must be formed at the bottom of a downtrend. You notice this volume is also decreasing. So we had high volume on the breakout, decreasing volume here on the pullback, plus a reversal candlestick formed at the support point at the trigger level. That's our confirmation for entry. Immediately green, it came back a little bit, but after that, um, we, were we were home free on that trade. So I alerted it on the way up. Uh, that's 15%, that's 20%, that is 30% off the trigger bounce, new high of day, I'm out here, entry 375, exit 5.0, great way to start the week, today's a Monday, fantastic, also really important to start your week green on a Monday, it does something for you psychologically for the rest of the week, it sets the tone for the rest of the week. Your second entry on Boeing could have been, if we move to the 5 minute chart time frame, Second entry on Boeing could have been here at the break of this consolidation for a little bit more profits there. Um, I don't know after you know this big move here if that was super worth it because if we if we draw a trend line here we see that's a 4.46 percent move. So at this point, you know we'd already moved 3.36 percent on the stock. 
Um, that's that's a pretty hefty move in one go for a ticker. So um, I don't know that you know we necessarily should have been taking this trade, but you know if you if you didn't take that little pump move up, you could have possibly taken an entry here when it pulled back, understanding that this level was a previous support, right? And it pulled back and, and validated that level as a support using the intraday trend change trend line. There's your, uh, there's your trend line down. There's your break over the trend line. You see this volume starting to pick back up here. You could have caught another pump move there. Um, and again, this same level at 176 validating as a support could have taken an entry at that price point. Now for us, I alerted this a second time in chat um, closer to the the end of the day risky play here, but I'm long on Boeing with a tight stop at 178. So that was at 11:43 a.m. and that. Let's see. I have to jump to the uh, to the one minute chart time frame to show you my exact alert on that. So right here, right on this candle. All right. Um, I saw this candle form on the one minute chart time frame. It looked like it wanted to break down below 178. Um, but it ultimately, it was kind of validating this area as a support. Then I saw this candle form, this uh, this bullish engulfing candle. Yes, it's on the one minute chart time frame, so it doesn't mean a lot. But that's why I said it was a risky play. Um, we're going to keep that tight stop right there at 178. So going back to the five minute chart time frame, at that time, this is what I saw. Okay, so my pattern kind of looked something like this, right? So it was it was like a bull pennant formation forming. Um, and we had that break over 178. So my alert, um, I don't have it in the alert room, but I did mention in chat that, that you know, we wanted to watch that over 178. And so once we got that consolidation over 178, see this happened at 1130. Once we got that consolidation for a little bit, um, that's why I said at 1143, that's when I wanted to take the position, when it was moving up, not while it was still consolidating and moving sideways. So this ran up for another 20% gain, made a new high of day, fantastic. I don't see another entry on this ticker for the rest of the day, um, unless you know you were probably like wanting to sh to scalp this uh, bull pennant breakdown right here. But in my opinion, you know that's not worth it. You don't want to take a trade um, short against the position that has, you know, this has been increasing in value all day. So don't try to fight the trend, guys. The trend is your friend. That's it for Boeing. We're gonna move on to the second ticker, Microsoft, MSFT. Okay, so for us today, this was a long over 213 and a short below 210. It did not even get anywhere near clo uh, anywhere near 213. Um, opened up immediately, rent went red. So the same concept applies to uh, Microsoft as Boeing, except it's flipped. First five minute candle, big red. Don't chase the move down, wait for a pullback. Pullback rally, testing the 210 level as a resistance. That's your entry, don't enter short here. You enter short here, you're red on the trade when this pushes up. Enter short here when it rejects, right? Um, if you wanted to wait for more confirmation, you could have waited for this to break down and made a new low of day. Um, but in my opinion, you know, the short trigger is 210 for a reason. This is a gap. This is previous support. We were looking for this ticker to fill this gap on the daily chart. And look at that. I mean, we got pretty close to filling that gap to the bottom side. So Microsoft, uh, perfect pullback entry right there at the trigger level at 210. Um, there's your play. Came down. I would have taken profits into that strength. And maybe uh, that's midday there. I don't think I would have taken a play on this for the rest of the day. Um, you could have, you know, you very well could have. I just know that these hours, you know, between about eight, let's just say eight thirty and uh, eight thirty and eleven, uh, maybe at eleven, eleven thirty, somewhere around there. I don't take trades in this time frame because the volume is typically lower, and what happens is you don't get the same breakouts and the same force in the moves that you do see. Um, in the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. So I really avoid this midday trading, this midday chop um, session. But you know, you could have, if you were using the trend change, trend line method, could have taken an entry here. That's also a rejection off of this purple line, which is VWAP. Um, you know, nothing wrong with that play if you don't mind those midday plays. They just move slower, that's all. All right, 
Um, so another winner right there on Microsoft. The third play was SQ, short below 144. Okay, very similar setup to uh, Microsoft, right? Gapped up on the daily. We were looking for a break below the support point for a gap fill to the bottom side. Let's go to the five minute chart time frame and see how we could have played this. Um, it came down quite a bit, right? So we understand that our short trigger is at 144. We don't necessarily want to chase this move all the way down. That's 4% drop. Um, you could have entered here at the pullback of um, on, on this rally. So perfect pullback test of 144 as a resistance. There's your breakdown. That's a bearish engulfing candle forming on the five minute chart time frame. Opposite of a bullish engulfing candle, this is still a reversal candlestick. So when you see that candlestick happen, the move is likely to continue down. That candlestick happened also at a resistance. Perfect spot for this candlestick to form. There's your move down. Um, a couple of different plays could have been taken here. You know, you could have taken another short entry there and another short entry here. I would have waited for this candle to form and then got the breakdown. Um, but again, I didn't alert these in chat, that being that midday lull period. This was still playable though. Um, you could have done something like this too, right? So you just, if you didn't catch any of these moves, you just draw that pattern, that trend line, that overwhelming trend line, right? This is clearly the resistance point. This is your support trend line on the way up. There's your break of the support trend line and your move down. A couple of different ways to verify that these plays are happening. Okay, so SQ was a winner for us. Target long over 133. Let's talk about that one. All right, target, there is your 133 level. <clears throat> this one is a bit different because it happened midday, right? It, it, this was 10 o'clock in the morning um, when this was consolidating at the trigger. So I would not, personally, I would not have taken this play, but it did validate it, it was here. So um, when you see a stock push up like this to the trigger level and barely close over it, and then you start to see it consolidate like this, you can do one of two things. Either A, wait for a break of the consolidation, right? Wait, wait for a break of the range. And then that's going to tell you, you know, if it breaks to the top side of the range, that's kind of validating your move up. So you could have waited for the break of the range, not immediately taken a position as soon as it entered, um, waited for a break of the range. And then once you got that pop move up over the range, entered and caught this up for a, what is it, about a $1 run to the top side. Or, you could enter on that pullback, right? When this pulled back and kind of validated this as a support, um, this consolidation is good. If this had just broke straight out and kept going, that's more of a time when you want to look for a pullback, right? So if it pushed up, hit 134 immediately, and, and um, then you just now are seeing the play up here, you know, don't take that trade. Wait for that pullback to happen and then go. Um, because this barely hit the trigger and closed right at it, Right, you're gonna wait. You should wait and see what this does. Okay, chop, 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 chop. Consolidation. There's your break over the consolidation. Um, not a ton of volume here to validate that move. Again, this is the midday play, so I don't think I personally would have taken it, but it is um, it is something to note. So there's your break of the consolidation up to the top side. Your entry up to 134. Now it's pulling back to 133. Um, that's fine. You know we kind of. Probably can still put this on radar for tomorrow uh, so long as it closes over 133 and holds. That's it, guys. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, but those are different ways that you can trade the watch list. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and NKLA were also our side chart watches. Um, I'm not going to review those. Again, I want to keep this video kind of short, but I hope that this helps you out. If it has, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, drop a comment if the videos helped you out. Leave me some feedback and some reviews, maybe some things that you want to see in the future, and I'll try to get to making those videos for you guys. I will see you all in chat. Thanks, team.